Husker Vision presents. Fourth Straight Big Eight. The story of the 1994 Nebraska football championship season. Fourth Straight Big Eight is sponsored by Walgreens, the Pharmacy America Trust. And now here's host Gary Bender, one of America's finest football announcers. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Bender and I'm proud to be part of the 1994 Nebraska football highlight video. You know, I travel to many venues across this great country of ours and few if any can match the tradition and excellence of this place, Memorial Stadium, Lincoln, Nebraska. In 1994, the Huskers celebrated their 200th consecutive sellout at Memorial Stadium. That NCAA record is far and away the best in the history of college football. It's no wonder that Nebraska fans are known as the best fans in all of college football. Memorial Stadium got a bit of a facelift in 1994 with a new sound system. And how about the new Husker Vision instant replay screens? The first of their kind in a college football stadium. The big screens and sound system made the tunnel walk possible. The best and most dramatic entrance of a football team in the country. Of course, the most important thing Husker fans had to cheer about this season was the team itself. A perfect 12-0 regular season record left little doubt that Nebraska was the number one ranked team in the country. The Huskers have also added to their list of impressive NCAA record streaks, including 33 consecutive winning seasons, 26 consecutive seasons with nine or more wins, and 26 consecutive bowl appearances, including 14 straight New Year's Day bowl games. It all adds up to an amazing college football program, headed by the winningest coach in the country, Dr. Tom Osborne. Let's take a closer look now at the 1994 football season and the Huskers' road to their fourth straight Big A title. For Nebraska, the 1994 season actually began on January 1st. The Huskers faced Florida State in the Orange Bowl, the national title on the line. Despite being 17-point underdogs, the Huskers outplayed Florida State and looked like they would win the game when Byron Bennett kicked a field goal to give Nebraska a 16-15 lead with just 1-16 to play. However, Florida State came back with a field goal of its own to go in front 18 to 16 with 21 seconds remaining. Nebraska still managed a miraculous drive, but a 45-yard field goal attempt with one second remaining sailed wide left. It was the only loss of the season and left Nebraska ranked number three in the country. Coming so close to the national title last season provided inspiration for the Huskers in 1994. The team adopted unfinished business as their motto for 94. Some of the best ever off-season workouts showed that this was a team on a mission. The mission began on August 28th at the kickoff classic just outside of New York City. Nebraska met number 24 West Virginia in the first game of the 1994 college football season. The Huskers went sightseeing in the Big Apple prior to the game, but this team was anxious to get on the field and prove that they were deserving of more than a number four preseason ranking. The guys came mainly for the game and, and what happened was uh, we did a lot of uh, extra activities I guess that kind of were meaningless for the reason that we were there and uh, the purpose was to win and I think we wanted to win convincingly and I think that was on everybody's mind. Oh, oh, sweet home, baby. That's it. On paper, West Virginia looked to be a formidable first foe for NU. After all, the Mountaineers ended last season as a sixth ranked team of the country with an 11 and one record. But with a nationwide television audience looking on, it was apparent that there was something special about the 1994 Huskers. Nebraska led three to nothing after the first 15 minutes as the Black Shirts held West Virginia to just 15 yards of offense in the first quarter. 
In the second quarter, it was the offense's turn to show up. And junior Tommy Frazier showed that he was indeed the top option quarterback in the country. A 25-yard touchdown by the Bradenton, Florida native made a 10 zip. The 15, the 10, the 5, touchdown! Touchdown, Tommy Frazier! Two plays later, linebacker Doug Coleman, a Husker from New Jersey, stripped the ball and recovered the fumble. From there, Frazier connected with junior Reggie Ball to make it NU 17, West Virginia nothing. And Nebraska wasn't done yet. Still in the second quarter, Frazier again followed his blockers around the left end. 27 yards later, Tommy hit Pater, and the Huskers' lead was up to 24. All the while, the black shirt defense continued to shut down the Mountaineers. In fact, West Virginia had just eight yards of total offense in the first half. Just before the end of the second quarter, senior cornerback Baron Miles, another New Jersey product, showed his All-American potential with an impressive interception. In the second half, Nebraska's domination continued. Coach Tom Osborne pulled back the reins on his powerful offense, but Frazier still managed to score his third touchdown of the day on this 42-yard run. The defense kept up its relentless pressure, and even with reserves playing the entire fourth quarter, the Huskers were still able to shut out West Virginia. The 31-0 final score made a strong statement indeed as to the strength of this Nebraska team. We have a, a really good team this year, and I think offensively and defensively, if we play like that all year, we, there's no stopping us. The kickoff classic victory was especially satisfying for five Husker players who hail from the state of New Jersey. Performing this well in front of friends and family made for a very memorable experience. Oh, it feels good. It feels good. Hard fought game. Shut them out. Can't beat that. And in front of the home folk. Home folk, that's right. Sweet home, sweet home, like I said. You go back there and, I mean, you're playing in front of 200 family and friends. I mean, you want to go out there and make a good impression, make your parents proud of you and everyone else. We just worked hard all through preseason camp and, I mean, from the first snap, first snap of the ball, you could just tell we were ready. Everyone was flying around, 11 hats to the ball. Everyone was just ready to play. It's probably the best thing that's ever happened to me. It was a chance to uh, have my first start in Nebraska here and, and play in front of a home crowd or home state. Uh, I had 106 friends and family who came to the game, and um, I guess they, they came and got a chance to see Nebraska, Nebraska's defense and offense at its best. Game two, the Huskers travel to Lubbock, Texas to play the Red Raiders of Texas Tech on ESPN's Thursday night game of the week. Nebraska's performance in the kickoff classic was impressive enough that the pollsters made NU the number one team in the country. But sometimes being number one is like putting a bullseye on your back. And the Red Raiders, who won their final five regular season games last year and played in a postseason bowl, were definitely shooting for an upset. Whether we won it or not, we were rated the number one team in the country. So we had a little bit of a, a thing to prove. We wanted to play like we deserved that spot, you know, whether we wanted it or not. We were on Thursday night on ESPN, so we were the number one team in the country. And we showed people that we, I think we deserve to be that team. Good job, baby. Woo! Against Texas Tech, Nebraska's versatile offense made for some entertaining prime time viewing. Tommy option right side, and uh, he keeps the ball, cuts up the field across the 45, 50, 45, 40, right side line to the 30, 35, to the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Tommy Frazier from 58 yards out. Tommy Frazier's 58-yard run was the first of six Nebraska touchdowns. In the second quarter, Frazier went to the air, and with the help of Zach Wiegert's huge block, Lawrence Phillips busted loose for 24 yards. The next play, Frazier completed the drive, and the Huskers were in front, 14 to nothing. The defense, meanwhile, was holding the Red Raiders at bay. Former quarterback Tony Velen got his first ever interception in the second quarter, and the Omaha native showed that he still knows what to do when the football's in his hands. In the second half, it was Lawrence Phillips' turn to shine. 
a sophomore from West Covina, California, into the night with two touchdowns and a career-high 175 yards on just 19 carries. The give is to Lawrence. He broke a tackle beyond the 45, the 50. He could go 40, 35, sprint to the end zone. 20, 15, 10, 5. Lawrence Phillips, touchdown! 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 We're going to take this one home. Offense is tired of uh, messing around. We can go ahead and take this one home. It was also a night that senior tight end Eric Alford will never forget. In the fourth quarter, Alford scored his first ever touchdown for the Huskers on a 35-yard bootleg pass. Tommy pulled up, and it was just and when he threw it, I, from, from the time it left his hands to the time it hit my hands, everything was in slow motion. And then once it hit my hand, everything sped up, and I was like, oh, running for my life. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's pretty nice it's, to get your first touchdown at another stadium, actually, and on national TV. Yeah. Fullback Corey Schlesinger also had a career best game, gaining 84 yards while carrying the ball just six times. The Huskers validated their number one ranking with a convincing 42 to 16 win at Texas Tech. For me, and I think as a team, it's, uh, it's really exciting to, to go on the road, you know, because you're really limited in the amount of players you have, and you really have this feeling. That's when we all, in Nebraska, we always talk about family and tradition. And that, that's, that really is what it boils down to on the road because you only got like 60 guys or so, and it's you against them, and it's just kind of exciting for us. Hey, 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 on the way to the Orange Bowl, baby, on the way to the Orange Bowl. While winning on the road may be exciting, there's nothing quite like the first home game of the season at Memorial Stadium. On the night before the home opener against UCLA, 35,000 big red fans turned out for a pep rally and the unveiling of the two new Husker Vision replay screens. The event was capped off with a spectacular fireworks display. It all made for an inspiring evening that no one in attendance will ever forget. Friday night was a real thrill. I mean, we walked out there and the stadium was at least half full, if, if not fuller. You know, I had goosebumps so big walking out there with the replay screens, the music. It was quite an experience to see all the support we got. The UCLA game also kicked off a new and exciting tradition. With the addition of the Husker Vision screens, fans are now able to watch the Huskers leave the locker room, walk through the tunnel, and make their way into the stadium. The tunnel walk is definitely the greatest entrance in all of college football. Coming through the tunnel and knowing that um, everybody is, is, is there, you know, looking at you up on the screens, and then you're hearing that music, and it's like, oh, you know, your drilling gets going, you know, you, I guess you kind of feel like the Chicago Bulls, you know, you're like, yeah, yeah, you know, you get, you get psyched, you get psyched, you get pumped, and it's, it's just nice to go out there and everybody's just screaming their lungs out for you, you know. The kickoff celebration, new sound system, and Husker Vision screens certainly didn't distract the nation's number one ranked team in its game against UCLA. Playing on national television for the third straight week, Nebraska completely dominated the 16th ranked Bruins. Frazier and Alford connected on a touchdown strike for the second week in a row, while the defensive line led by Terry Keneally and Dwayne Harris kept the heat on UCLA quarterback Wayne Cook all afternoon long. Fullback Corey Schlesinger continued to find running room up the middle and Lawrence Phillips went over the 100-yard mark rushing for the third straight game. In the second quarter, Clinton Childs and Damon Benning show that Nebraska has the best one, two, three punch in the country at IBAC. Childs' 22-yard run set up the Huskers' third touchdown of the game, a 12-yard run by Tommy Frazier. Damon Benning's head over heels TD made it 28 to seven. Meanwhile, the Huskers' relentless pass rush forced Cook into several uncharacteristic mistakes. Clint Brown and Tony Bielan made the most of their opportunities with interceptions in the second quarter. It is Cook to throw out of the shotgun. He's going for the long ball into coverage. 
And it's an interception by Nebraska. Tony Veland has the ball at the eight-yard line. The domination continued in the second half, both offensively. Quick pitch off to Clinton. He's inside the five, pulls his way forward into the end zone for the touchdown. And defensively. Cook fakes the inside draw, wants to throw. They got him. They nail him. UCLA is out of there. To Wayne Harris, knocking down Wayne Cook. The Husker receivers also got a chance to show their stuff. Senior wingback, Abdul Mohammed, on a 30-yard reverse. Sophomore split in, Brendan Holbein, got into the act scoring his first touchdown on this nine-yard shovel pass. When it was all said and done, number one ranked Nebraska sent UCLA packing back to the West Coast. The final, 49 to 21. After three games, Husker quarterback Tommy Frazier found himself as one of the top contenders for the Heisman Trophy. Nebraska football is so highly regarded and recognized through the United States that if one player sticks out and their team is doing well, that that player is going to be um, notified nationally as being one of the top players in the nation. It wasn't until the fourth game of the season that the Huskers finally played a game that wasn't against a 1993 Bowl team. Pacific blew in from California and proceeded to get blown out by the Huskers. Because of a sore leg, Tommy Frazier took just nine snaps in the game. But the Nebraska offense never missed a beat. In fact, the Huskers scored on their first seven possessions of the game. And all the while, the defense dominated once again. Damon Benning broke the ice with this one-yard dive. Pacific went nowhere. Terry Keneally applied pressure from his defensive tackle position. Lawrence Phillips carried the ball just nine times, but gained 138 yards, over half of which came on the 74-yard scamper. Lawrence across the 30, 35, he's gonna go. He's at the 50, the 40, the 35. He's to the 20, he's to the 15, the 10, the 5, touchdown! Touchdown, Lawrence Phillips! Then Baron Miles blocked the sixth punt of his stellar career to set up the Huskers' third TD. Fullback Corey Schlesinger did the honors from eight yards out. Back to the defense, and junior quarterback Tyrone Williams of Palmetto, Florida, gets his first pick of the season. That led to another Schlesinger touchdown, but this time Corey broke to the outside on a 39-yarder for the Bruiser from Duncan, Nebraska. True freshman Grant Whisper a definite star in the making from Webb City, Missouri, kept up their relentless defensive attack. The first quarter ended with the Huskers in front, 28 to nothing, and there was more to come in the second period. Brooke Beringer, who replaced Frazier at quarterback, kept the ball on the option for his first touchdown of the year. On NU's next series, Beringer threw his first touchdown pass of the year, a perfect 15-yarder to Cluster Johnson. Back on the defensive side of the ball, Freshman cornerback Leslie Dennis, another Bradenton, Florida product, got the crowd back on its feet. Return to the 20, the 25, Leslie Dennis. He's out to the 30, the 35. He's to the 45, to the 50, to the 45, to the left side line. He's going to go. Holy cow. A clipping call unfortunately nullified Leslie's spectacular return. But it didn't matter on the scoreboard because four plays later, Eric Alford made a great over-the-shoulder touchdown catch. Nebraska led Pacific 49 to nothing. In the second half, Coach Tom Osborne emptied the bench as 104 Huskers saw playing time. Pacific did manage three scores against the Nebraska Reserve, but win number four was in the books. Nebraska 70, Pacific 21. The Huskers ran for 510 yards against Pacific to give the team a nation leading 470 yards per game rushing average. Much of the credit for those awesome numbers belong to the offensive line, made up of seniors Zach Weger, Brendan Stein, Rob Zadiska, and Joel Wilkes, and junior Aaron Graham. The five linemen are carrying on the Huskers tradition of great offensive lines. In fact, many started touting this group as the best offensive line ever at Nebraska. It's great to, you know, you can go out there and, and smash around, and after the game, you look at the stats, and you have 450 yards rushing, and, I mean, you could have uh, Emmett Smith in your backfield, and if no one's blocking, then you're not going to get that many yards rushing. So, I mean, it, it's, it takes great pride. You know, you look in the accomplishments we've done so far, and to be leading the nation by oh, close to 140 yards rushing, I mean, more than any other team a game. I mean, that's just a great accomplishment. As an offensive line, we just don't like to go out there and uh, 
and uh, play patty cake with, with other teams. We want to go out there and really dominate and crush them. Uh, we, we leave each practice with a saying that we've done for the past year and a half, and uh, when we break after practice, and our saying is dominate. And uh, when we don't, we don't just say that, that's what we do. On three, one, two, three, dominate! I think the best thing that makes the whole offensive line click is the experience we've had together. You know, we, we've all came up together and, and uh, we fought our way to get our positions and, and just the overall um, unity on the offensive line it makes it special. We just have a confidence um, between all of us. We know that we've been through, you know, we've been through a lot and we know that nothing can stop us because we've been, you know, we've been putting in the hours and we just have a confidence between us that nothing can get in our way. It's fun to look at guys lining up alongside of you, driving other um, players from other teams down the field. And it's just something that you just you almost get a natural high off of, is just going out there and starting control of the game. And that's probably the big thing, is just knowing that it's the offensive line. It's those five people up front who are taking control of the football game, and they're the ones that are making things happen. In addition to his football prowess, Zadiska maintained a perfect 4-0 grade point average while receiving his undergraduate degree in biological sciences. Rob also became just the third player in Big 8 history to be named a four-time academic All-Big 8 selection. Of course, Rob does get kidded about his 4-0 average by his fellow offensive linemen. R-O-B-Z-A-T-E-C-H-K-A Zatichka, Zatichka Forever will his GPA be high, 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 high <laughs> Nebraska concluded its non-conference schedule against Wyoming, but it was a turbulent week for the Huskers. The cause of Tommy Frazier's sore leg turned out to be a blood clot. He was hospitalized, and when another clot formed, Frazier was out for the season. That put the quarterbacking duties in the hands of junior Brooke Behringer, the only scholarship quarterback left on the team. Nebraska played like a team without its leader in the first half. Wyoming shocked the Huskers by jumping out in front 14 to nothing. NU finally got on the board midway through the second period after Baron Miles intercepted a Wyoming pass at the 34-yard line. Beringer connected with tight end Mark Gilman on a 20-yard pass down to the five-yard line. Two plays later, Lawrence Phillips dove over from one yard out. But Wyoming struck back and went ahead 21-7 with one minute remaining in the half. That, however, is when the Huskers took control. Beringer ran the hurry-up offense to perfection, completing seven straight passes to march NU into scoring position. With 12 seconds left in the half, Brooks scored on a tough five-yard option. But after the game, it was learned that Beringer suffered a partially collapsed lung on the play. I knew at the time that, that there was probably something pretty seriously wrong. I thought maybe I had some cracked ribs, and we didn't know exactly how serious it was. But it was my first start, and it was, you know, we, we were down at halftime. And I wanted to come out, you know, and prove to myself and prove to my teammates that, that I was tough enough to play and uh, that, I, you know, I felt like I needed to be in there and uh, we came back and won the game. In one of the most courageous performances in Nebraska football history, Beringer led the Huskers to victory in the second half. On Wyoming's first possession of the second half, Tyrone Williams got the big red rolling. Intercepted by... Tyrone Williams to the 20, to the 25, 30, right side line, 35, written down from behind and thrown out of bounds at the 43-yard line of Nebraska. Tyrone Williams. From there, Beringer, partially collapsed lung and all, went 25 yards down to the 30-yard line. Two plays later, he was again off and running. On the keep is Brooke. He keeps the ball inside the 20, inside the 15, the 10, the 5. Great bound field block and a touchdown. Touchdown by Nebraska's quarterback, Brooke Beringer. The entire Nebraska team then stepped it up in the second half. Baron Miles stretches out to snare his second interception of the game. And on the very next play, Lawrence Phillips breaks a tackle and is off to the races on a 40-yard run for six. That put Nebraska in front 28 to 21. Still in the third quarter, Beringer again hit Pater. With the help of great blocking, Brooke went in untouched from 11 yards out, and it was now 35 to 21. Wyoming did keep the pressure on the Huskers, but not quite like the pressure Dante Jones and Troy Dumas put on Wyoming quarterback Jeremy Dombek. This high-low hit may have been the hardest of the season. Dombek and his face mask certainly wouldn't argue that point. 
It wasn't the prettiest win of the year, but the 42-32 final gave the Huskers a 5-0 record heading into Big 8 play. To be down 14-0 and able to make the stops and make them punt a couple of times and further down the line, that will pay off, and especially to go four quarters, that also will help because coming to the Colorados and the K-States, I mean, you can count on going four quarters, especially in the Big 8. One of the big question marks heading into the 1994 season was a kicking game. But after five games, it was clear that kicking would be a strength on the team. Senior Tom Seeler was consistent on extra points and short field goals, while Darren Erstad's strong leg kept the Huskers among the nation's leaders in net punting and rarely were his booming kickoffs returnable. In fact, after the Wyoming game, Coach Tom Osborne said Darren Erstad may have been the difference between victory and defeat. He says that it can make 14 to 17 points difference a game. I think that's what it was against Wyoming. And he pretty much said the kicking game won that game. And I, I take it pretty seriously, and some tip people take it for granted, but I think it's a major role in, in playing a football game. Erstad came to Nebraska on a baseball scholarship. And last spring, he was an all-Big 8 outfielder, leading the Huskers in home runs. Rather than recruit a punter place kicker last winter, the football coaches visited the baseball field and invited Darren, a great high school kicker in North Dakota, to come out for the team. So how does this two-sport star compare playing baseball and football for Nebraska? Not even close. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, you, you try and describe it to your friends back home, and you, there's just no words for it. They have to come and see it for themselves, and even then they don't get the whole picture of it. Once you come out of that tunnel down there and you finally <clears throat> get to see exactly what everybody's cheering about it, it's something pretty amazing. The Big Red kicked off their Big 8 season hosting Oklahoma State on October 8th. The Cowboys came north to shoot it out with the Huskers. And even though Nebraska was 5-0, skeptics were beginning to surface. Many felt this team would be hard-pressed to continue winning without Tommy Frazier. As a result, Nebraska began dropping in the polls from number one to number two and eventually to number three. This was something the team did not appreciate, but it may have served to bond this already tight group even closer together. We hate to be labeled as a, as a one-man team, and, and Tommy's a great player, but uh, I think everybody's going to step it up a notch, and we've got enough great athletes on this team to, to, to get the job done and, and win the national championship. So we're, we're not uh, going to listen to all that criticism, and uh, I think everybody's, everybody's pretty excited about the situation. Everybody has to really pick it up and, and take up the slack, and I think as a defensive unit, we really decided that if we can buckle down and not let people score, then we can win the ball games on our own, and the offense isn't going to have to pull as much of their weight. Pete's back. They got him in his big Perry Keneally. Perry Keneally from High Ennis, Nebraska. Keneally and his fellow Blackshirts were the story in the Oklahoma State game. After a subpar showing against Wyoming, the Blackshirts proved against OSU that they are indeed one of the best defensive units in the country. Down. Starting into the hole was Andre Richardson. He ran into a Mack truck. Bill Ellis and Christian Peter knocked him cold. Okie State was limited to just one field goal and only 136 yards of total offense against the Huskers. The Nebraska offense, however, managed just one Lawrence Phillips touchdown and a 48-yard field goal by Darren Erstad in the first half for a 9-3 lead. And then at the locker room at halftime, it was learned that Brooke Beringer's lung problem had reoccurred. So the quarterbacking duties were turned over to sophomore walk-on Matt Turman. I'm going to remember that I guided the number one, number two team in the nation to a, to a victory because the game was on the line and I was the guy in charge. In the third quarter against OSU, with Turman in charge of the offense, the Huskers scored 16 points to take complete control of the game. Herman goes long, it's Abdul Mohammed, he's got the ball! Complete inside the 20 yard line! Holy cow! Unbelievable! Terman led the Huskers on three touchdown drives, and Lawrence Phillips scored three touchdowns. But the most exciting play of the day came after this Phillips TD late in the third quarter. The snap of the place, but they blow it as uh, Federal picks it up and runs with it. Federal finally going to be, oh, he throws the ball in the end zone, Earth stands, double extra point! I was scrambling around there and I went to go to the right 
and there was a guy right there, so I was like, this ain't gonna work, so I went the other way, and I was scrambling around. And right as they wrapped me up and I was going down, I just kind of seen a flash of red in the corner of my eye in the corner of the end zone, and I just threw the ball up, and luckily Darren was there, and he made a great catch, and the rest is history. The Husker defense continued its spectacular play in the second half. Kareem Moss with a spectacular interception. And guys like Jason Pesterfield, Scott Saltzman, and Clint Brown also contributed to the dominating D, which held the Cowboys to 40 yards rushing in the game. The Huskers beat Oklahoma State 32 to three. Lawrence Phillips rushed for 221 yards to break the 1,000 yard mark in just six games. Lawrence is the latest in a long line of great running backs at Nebraska. In fact, in 14 of the last 16 seasons, the Huskers starting Iback has rushed for over 1,000 yards. The running back spot here is highlighted. I mean, it's the it's the spot. I mean, that's where everybody's focusing on their attention on is the running back spot. And you're going to get a lot of uh, attention nationwide if you're if you're playing eye back at Nebraska. You got a good coach here. Coach Solich is one of the best coaches. Helped me a lot, you know, in, in doing things on the field and off the field. And I think it's you know just one of the best schools for running backs if you're going to you know want to get to the next level. Nebraska was back on national television for game number seven against Kansas State. It was a matchup of undefeated teams, and the 16th ranked Wildcats felt that this was indeed the year they would beat the mighty Huskers. I think that was uh, the most apprehensive I ever was before a Kansas State game, and, and certainly one of the most apprehensive periods that I can recall because uh, obviously uh, Tommy Frazier was was out uh, indefinitely and then Brooke Berenger you had not only the risk of losing the game but you had a risk of, uh, of health there and uh, it was a tight game and I know Kansas State really was counting on beating us I think they thought they were going to beat us down there so uh, that was kind of a, a turning point of the season because after we got Brooke through that game without collapsing the lung again, uh, he was starting to get better, and from that point on, he began to function more like a normal quarterback. Bring it home, baby. Bring it home. Hey, they don't know about the Huskers in the bad weather. <laughs> it's an ugly day, too. It's going to get ugly. They don't have to a steady light rain fell throughout the afternoon of the game in Manhattan. But as always, when the Huskers take to the road, thousands of loyal Big Red Packers were along to cheer on their team. With Brooke Behringer still on the mend, Matt Terman made his first ever started quarterback for the Huskers. K-State had one of the nation's top throwers in Chad May. But it was obvious from the very start that May was not going to have a big day against the hungry Husker defense. He sacked as the pass throw broke down Grant Wistrom, the freshman from Webb City, Missouri. On Nebraska's second possession of the game, the Huskers gave the ball to Lawrence Phillips in all six plays, and the sophomore showed that he can indeed carry the load. His two-yard touchdown put NU ahead, seven to nothing. Full house backfield, double tight ends. Furman turns, gives to Lawrence, touchdown, goes in, untouched. Touchdown, Lawrence Phillips. K-State did score on the second play of the second quarter, but the Wildcats still trailed seven to six after Troy Dumas broke through the middle to block the point after attempt. The Huskers didn't score again in the first half, but neither did the Wildcats, as the black shirts were constantly on the attack. Senior quarterback Baron Miles had one of the best games of his career, breaking up a school record six passes. Here, he swats away May's attempt in the back of the end zone. Late in the second quarter, Troy Dumas ended Chad May's string of 186 passing attempts without an interception, when the senior linebacker picked off his first career pass and returned it 50 yards. The whole week, we were just hearing, you know, what Chad May was going to do to us. He was going to pick our secondary apart and you know, our offense is, you know, ordinary and our defense is ordinary. We don't ever change anything up and, you know, everybody was counting us out and, you know, we just wanted to come through. In the second half, the Husker defense continued to thwart every Kansas State offensive effort. Chad May was sacked a total of six times on the day. Chicago native Ed Stewart doing the honors here. And when May did get his passes off, the Husker defensive backs were there to knock the ball away. 
Meanwhile, Brooke Barrier came off the bench to lead the offense in the second half. He followed the big guys up front, and Nebraska's continual pounding began to pay off in the fourth quarter. Lawrence Phillips carried the ball 31 times, gaining a tough 117 yards. But the guy who really sparked the team was backup fullback Jeff McAvick. The junior from Brainerd, Nebraska, high-stepped it in from 15 yards out to put Nebraska ahead 14 to 6. But McAvick in the end zone, touchdown! McAvick on a trap play up the middle. I got to the side and I saw the way our offensive line had it sealed off for me and, and I think it was Mark Gilman had a, had a good seal, seal block the tight end on that side and and I kind of saw a guy out of the corner of my eye coming at my feet, so I started the high step. So I don't know if it was actually, but I was just so excited after. I don't remember anything after. You know, the crowd kind of got into it a little bit, and I was jumping all over the place. It was a really exciting moment for me. Later in the fourth quarter, the Huskers got rolling again. This time, a 34-yard pass from Beringer to Abdul Muhammad was the spark. McAvickle then continued his relentless running up the middle, first for 15 yards. And then he twists and turns his way for 12, carrying a couple of cats to the six. That set up a Darren Erstad 24-yard field goal, which put the game out of reach at 17 to six. Fittingly, the game ended when Grant Wistrom, along with Christian Peter, sacked Chad May as time expired. The 7-0 Huskers had earned this hard-fought victory the old-fashioned way with a grueling ground attack and an aggressive defense. Woo! That was it, baby! That's how you play. We had to come out there and prove to the non-believers that we were still champions. And one thing about Nebraska, we know how to win. So we, we always got there every week knowing that we was, we was going to win the game. The Husker defense continued its dominating style of play in the eighth game of the season at Missouri. Let's go, Dominate on three, ready? One, two, three. Dominate! Defensive coordinator Charlie McBride has fashioned a quick attacking style defense. Speed is the name of the game of the 90s, and at every position, Nebraska has big playmakers. In fact, this defense is so versatile that the Huskers are ranked in the top 10 nationally in every defensive category. In the Missouri game, Tiger quarterback Jeff Handy felt the pressure. With guys like Oklahoma native Jason Pesterfield bearing down on him, it wasn't long before the Huskers took Handy out of his game plan. I think once, once we get in their face a couple times and, you know, we hit, hit them, knock them down, maybe sack them for a loss, you know, they, they get thinking, they get they hearing footsteps, and, and that, that makes them worry. That's, that's a good feeling. He's hit for a loss on the play. Phil Ellis knifing through on the linebacker blitz. Joe Freeman knocked silly before he could take one step. In the first half of the Mizzou game, the Huskers pretty much stuck to the running game. Brooke Behringer showed that he was getting back to 100%. Corey Schlesinger kept the defense on us with bursts like this up the middle. And for the eighth straight game, Lawrence Phillips rushed for over 100 yards. Beringer toss sweep right side to Lawrence, behind blocking, he gets in and touch, touchdown, Lawrence Phillips. Back up high back, Damon Benning, a sophomore out of Omaha, found a clear path to the end zone, courtesy of the O-line, and that put Nebraska in front, 14 to nothing. In the second half, it was again the Husker defense that got things going. Dwayne Harris sacked Handy for a seven-yard loss. On the next play, Handy hurried his pass, and Baron Miles was there to capitalize on the mistake with his fourth interception of the season. After staying on the ground most of the previous two games, it was time for the offense to open up its attack. First, it was Beringer to Mark Gilman in what was the Montana Nady's first ever touchdown as a Husker. I went out uh, about 10 yards, and I made my break towards the sideline, and I looked back to Brooke and there he was looking at me and I was like whoa this could be it and uh, the ball came and all I had to do was catch it because it was a perfect throw it hit me right in the numbers uh, it, it was a quite it was quite a thrill I've been waiting for that day for four years and uh, it was great next up was Brendan Holbein a sophomore split in from Kozak who latched on to this 30 yarder from the red hot bearing we were limited in the Kansas State game just because of the quarterback situation but uh, Brooke healed from that, came back to the Missouri game. Um, we ran some good patterns. Um, a lot of people were open. I think it was like 9 for 13 or something like that. And, and uh, he, he's got a really nice touch on the ball. He's got an accurate, accurate arm, hits you in the numbers. And uh, Missouri was a, a memorable day for a lot of guys. Well, Brendan had his stats right. 
Brooke completed 9 of 13 for 152 yards and three touchdowns. The third of which came on this 43-yarder. The junior split in Reggie Ball. The final score was 42 to 7. The offense was gelling under Beringer, and the defense, well, they were playing like champions. Yeah, I think that as a defense, we decided to as a goal, you know, pick it up. You know, when, when Tommy got hurt, we we all got together and we say, let's let's pick it up a notch. And when Brooke got hurt, we got together again and say, we need to really pick it up. And right now, we're not counting on the offense anymore. You know, what what they do is a bonus for us. And we're gonna have to. We're stopping everything. And defense wins games, and that's our attitude right now. Now it was time for the Big H showdown between number three Nebraska and number two Colorado. This was a historic game for Nebraska. Every home game at Memorial Stadium since 1962 at Venezuela, and the Colorado game marked the NCAA record 200th consecutive sellout for the Huskers. With another national television audience looking on, and with a Big 8 and possibly national championship riding on the outcome, the crowd of over 76,000 was at a fever pitch throughout the afternoon. The Buffaloes came into the game with one of the most explosive offenses in the country. And CU had the nation believing that this was a team of destiny. But this group of Buffalo players had never experienced a win over Nebraska, the three-time defending Big A champions. And the Huskers were not in the mood to give up their conference crown. In the first quarter, Nebraska played the field position game to perfection. The Huskers had no trouble marching downfield on their first possession. And even though a bad snap in the shotgun formation cost the Huskers a shot at scoring, Darren Erstad kept Colorado pinned back near its own end zone with a perfectly placed punt. When the Huskers got the ball back, they had just 51 yards to go for a touchdown. Beringer passed to Mark Gilman for nine. Then, Brooks showed the Buffs that he's a threat running the football as well. From there, Corey Schlesinger did the honors. Schlesinger inside the 10 to 5. He scores! Touchdown! 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 In the second quarter, the Huskers really took charge. Schlesinger again running tough on a 29-yard pickup. Lawrence Phillips battled for 14 yards that led to a Tom Sealer field goal, which put Nebraska in front 10 to nothing. In their only possession of the second quarter, Colorado did move into scoring position, but Dwayne Harris tackled Cordell Stewart for a loss on a key third down play to turn back the Bucks. Then it was time for a vintage Nebraska drive, 73 yards in all, but this time most of it came through the air. Complete across the middle, offer 40, 45, Across the 45. Brooke takes it back, play fake, wants to throw complete. It's across the middle, inside the 40 yard line again. It's Mark Gilman. He runs a bootleg on the counter fake, throws that ball, and it's complete to Gilman inside the 15 yard line. Takes it back, boots again, shovel pass to Bill Muhammad inside the five. He's down inside the three yard line. Clinton Childs hops in from two yards out with just 36 seconds left in the half to give Nebraska a 17 to nothing halftime lead. In the second half, the Huskers erased all doubts as to who was best in the Big Eight. Lawrence Phillips, who again rushed for more than 100 yards, was a workhorse on Nebraska's first possession of the third quarter. But the conclusion of the 69-yard drive came through the airways as the Big Red went up 24 to zip. The three backs in the backfield and the snap to Beringer, drops back to throw off the play fake. He's got Alford there, inside the five, touchdown! Colorado did manage one touchdown in the game following a Husker turnover late in the third quarter. But the telling statistic in this game dealt with a crucial third and fourth down plays. The Buffaloes were 0 for 11 on third down conversions and 0 for 4 on fourth down conversions. Colorado's big play offense was held to a mere seven points as the black shirt defense came up with big plays time and again. And after this win, Nebraska deservedly moved back into the top spot in all of college football. It was supposedly supposed to be, you know, the best balanced offense in the nation. And, you know, everybody thought that our defense wasn't going to be able to handle, you know, um, Cordell Stewart and Westbrook and, you know, Fourier and so on. But, you know, we just brought it all together that day and, you know, shut everybody down. It was a great feeling because we went out there 
and shut Colorado down. I think they came into that game averaging like 40 points a game and rushing over like 400 yards or so. And we really shut the offense down. We really proved to the world that we had a great defense. Well, it just felt like I was on top of the world. You know, just here listening at the crowd, the cheers of the crowd just make you feel very, very warm. Um, this feeling inside of me right now is overwhelming. I only can um, go out and try my best, you know, because this is a chance that only we have right now. We were very proud of our team against Colorado because we thought athletically that Colorado would certainly be the best team that we'd play all year during the regular season at least, and, and uh, certainly one of the top two or three squads in the country in terms of overall talent. And uh, I thought offensively we did a, a nice job of controlling the ball, running the ball, mixing in a few passes, and then defensively to hold a, a football team that explosive to seven points was a, a tremendous accomplishment. The University of Kansas found out there would be no letdown in the Huskers following the big win over Colorado. The final home game each year is an emotional time for the seniors. On this day, 25 Husker seniors were playing their final game at Memorial Stadium, and they certainly gave the crowd of over 75,000 plenty to cheer about. On the Jayhawks' first offensive play of the game, Alabama native Dwayne Harris applied the pressure, and safety Tony Velan picked off the hurried pass setting the tone for a day of Husker dominance. I think we got the defense motivated and got the offense motivated also because we give them the ball deep in you know, their territory and kind of set the tone for the day and we just you know, pretty much stomped on it from there. Nebraska settled for a field goal following the interception, but it wasn't long before the offense was back on the field. That's because two plays later, the Husker secondary got in on the act again. They pass by Preston down the left side, bait pass, intercepted by Nebraska at the 30 yard line. Tyrone Williams on the pick. While Kansas was having no success at all passing, Brooke Behringer had the magic touch. Reggie Ball hauled in a Behringer bomb at the 12, broke a tackle, and the Huskers were in front 10 zip. The heat was definitely on the Jayhawk defense. On the Huskers' next possession, Brooke again went to the air, first to Eric Alford for a 28 yard pickup. And then Reggie Ball made his second big catch of the game. Snap to Behringer, looks right, throws that ball, fade pattern to Ball. He's got it inside the 30, the 25, inside the 20, the 15, inside the 10, the 5, and down he goes at the four-yard line. Lawrence Phillips capped off the quick 80-yard drive with this four-yard dive to make it 17 to 3. The defense, meanwhile, was making it a miserable day for Kansas. The Jayhawks managed just 16 yards of offense in the first quarter, compared to 217 for the Huskers. Nebraska also put up 24 points on the board in the first quarter, with the final touchdown, a 40-yard run by fullback Corey Schlesinger. Things didn't get much better for KU in the second quarter. On the first play, Grant Wistman blasted through the line, recording the 34th sack of the season for the Husker defense. With Kansas keen on the NU running backs, the passing game continued to be lucrative for the Huskers. Behringer's 37-yard pass to Damon Benning set up Nebraska's fourth touchdown of the game. Jeff Makovica scored on this eight-yard run up the middle. The Huskers' final touchdown of the half was the biggest play of them all, a 64-yarder to the streaking Cluster Johnson. In the first half alone, Behringer completed eight of 10 passes for 249 yards. A lot of times when they come play us, they're always playing for the run. And so uh, Coach Osborne seen him wide open, so he's like, he didn't want him all on the line like that. So he started, you know, letting us go deep and stuff and seeing if we were going to make it happen. Last week against Colorado, we had a, a tight end got involved a lot. And I, then after that, they started forgetting about us. Then we got involved. So I guess, you know, you know the defenses now have to play more honest and straight up with us now. With only 35 yards rushing in the first half, Lawrence Phillips' streak of 100-yard games appeared to be in jeopardy. But Phillips came out strong in the third quarter to easily surpass the century mark. Lawrence finished the day with 153 yards and two touchdowns and only 21 carries. The sophomore sensation was now 10 for 10 in 100-yard games in 1994. Number one Nebraska beat Kansas for the 26th consecutive year, the final 45 to 17. The Huskers finished the day with 336 yards rushing, 
267 passing for a total of 603 yards. This despite the fact that none of the starters played in the fourth quarter. On paper, the Iowa State game looked like it would be another Nebraska blowout. Come on, now, let's go. No repeats. Let's go, baby. Come on, we got you. But the Cyclones, who were winless in 1994, put up a tough fight. On the game's opening drive, it looked like the Huskers would have no trouble dispatching the Cyclones. Brooke Beringer cuts back against the grain and blows by the Cyclone defenders on a 20-yard run. Then it was Beringer to Phillips for 27 yards. Phillips also completed the 80-yard drive with a one-yard plunge and the Huskers had an early 7-0 lead. On the defensive side of the ball, the sack attack was very much at evidence once again. Troy Dumas got to the Iowa State quarterback on the Cyclones' first offensive play of the game. And Ed Stewart showed why he was named a Butkus Award finalist with three tackles for losses in the game. In the second quarter, though, Iowa State kicked a pair of field goals to pull within one at 7-6. Yeah, I think the wide receivers are doing a pretty good job getting in their safety. And uh, let's just make sure we stay with it. We're going to have some big passes here before you know it. Right? Nebraska responded late in the half with another airstrike. Abdul Mohammed hauled in a 14-yarder, and then the senior wingback made one of the best catches of the season on the next play. He told me to stay in. So I figured it was going to be a big pass play. Abdul laid out on a 38-yard barrier pass to put the Huskers up 14-6 to six at the half. I was leaning a hard slant to make the corner kind of bite and hesitate on it like I was going to block the safety, and he hesitated, and I just took off, and when I looked back, I seen Brooke dropping back, and the ball was in the air by then. And I just kept my eyes on the ball, and it looked like it was going to be overthrown, but I just picked up my speed and laid off for it and came out with the big kick. The third quarter saw Iowa State get back in the thick of things and shock waves had to be felt when the score Nebraska 14, Iowa State 12 after three quarters was announced in stadiums across the country. But the Huskers have always been known as a very strong fourth quarter team. And that was a blueprint for success in the Iowa State game. The defense did its part shutting down the Cyclones and then the offense got rolling. Damon Benning's six-yard touchdown run gave the Huskers some breathing room at 21 to 12. Lawrence Phillips gained 120 of his 183 yards in the final period to break Thurman Thomas's Big 8 sophomore rushing record. Lawrence's longest run of the day was ruined when he had the ball knocked loose after a 61-yard game. But Phillips atoned for the fumble by scoring Nebraska's final touchdown on a 21-yard run, giving the Huskers a 28 to 12 win over Iowa State. We're number one. We're going to see you in Miami. We're going to go all the way. Defensive tackles Terry Keneally and Christian Peter combined for 24 tackles against Iowa State, and this was their kind of football game. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'd rather have uh, play every game like uh, Iowa State's offense played us. I mean, they run the ball a lot, and they run it well, and I think that's why Terry and I had, you know, decent games is because they're just running at us. And, we just stopped them. Nebraska's phenomenal success in 1994 was by no means a big surprise. But considering that the Huskers lost two of their best players to injuries early in the season, and the unbeaten record becomes all the more amazing. Sophomore free safety Mike Minter severely injured his knee in the second game of the season, while quarterback Tommy Frazier missed most of the year with blood clots in his leg. But even though those two couldn't be out on the field, they were still cheering the team on from the sidelines. Yeah, I try to let the team know that I'm still there, even though I can't be out there physically, but mentally, emotionally, I'm still there. I'm still part of this team and that I'm going to do whatever it takes to help them overcome the adversity this team has suffered with me and Mike going down and be able to pull the game out and win it. It's real hard to set back, but then again, you know, you know, I feel part of when I see them make a good play, it makes me feel even better that, you know, hey, you know, it makes me feel like I'm out there. 
And opponents had better watch out in 1995 because both Minter and Frazier vow to be back better than ever next season. Oh, yeah, most definitely next year they better watch out because I'm, I'm coming back with a vengeance. And I'm working hard, and um, next year it's, it's going to be devastating out there. So um, they better watch out. It's made me realize that football is, is there, that I love football, and I want to play it real bad. But then there's going to be something that's going to hold you out. But if you do the right things and prepare yourself well, that you come back and play. Oh, yeah. Going on, going on one more time. This time we're coming out with the ring, baby. With the ring! Yay! Nebraska, Oklahoma. One of the greatest rivalries in college football. It's a tradition all across America to watch this annual game the day after Thanksgiving. In recent years, however, the Sooners have been no match for the talented Huskers. Nebraska came into this game having beaten Oklahoma five of the last six years, including three straight. And All-American Zach Wieger felt good about making it four wins in a row over OU. Beautiful weather, beautiful field. Have a great feeling. Orange Bowl bound, Orange Bowl bound. Go, baby! Yeah, baby! But a win against the Sooners, especially when playing in Norman, is something you don't ever want to take for granted. In the locker room prior to kickoff, Coach Osborne told his team they would be in for a tough game. It's important that you display confidence. You know, I think that uh, Oklahoma is, is going to play hard. Uh, they're going to doubt whether they can win or not. And I think that anything you can do to reinforce that in terms of just the way you carry yourself, the way you play, the, the, the uh, actions that you have on the field, the better off we're going to be. And so uh, no matter what happens, whether we get an early lead, get behind, they got to play out there with 60, for 60 minutes with us. And our strength has been this year that we play well together, we support each other, and we've been a very, very difficult team to handle for 60 minutes. Now, it may happen early, it may happen late, but sooner or later it's going to happen. Coach Osborne's words proved to be prophetic. Through the first three quarters, Oklahoma gave the Huskers quite a battle. But as usual, Nebraska dominated the final 15 minutes of play. The game certainly got off to a good start for the Huskers, when on Oklahoma's second play from scrimmage, Senior Kareem Moss came up with a big play. A quick count, and it is a give again to the, no, a fake and the long throw downfield McGee. In, it's going to be intercepted by Nebraska's Kareem Moss. Huskers have the football. I think I got a good eye for the ball, you know, seeing, seeing it get handed off and, and things like that. And I saw the play fake, and, you know, I see that he didn't hand it off, so I kind of kept, kept backing up and kept backing up, and then I see, seen him release the ball and was hoping I'd catch it. And I did. Following the interception, the Huskers moved into scoring position. The drive stalled, however, and NU failed to score when Matt Terman's run on a fake field goal came up two yards short of the first down. Defensively, the black shirts gave the Sooners very little breathing room throughout the first half. McGee on an option play, gives the tail back. He is smothered for a loss. Back inside the 20-yard line, Dante Jones all over James Allen like a wet blanket. In a defensive battle, NU's only points of the first half came early in the second quarter when Darren Erstad split the uprights from 46 yards out. Oklahoma tried to counter with a field goal of its own, but Baron Miles broke through and blocked the seventh kick of his career. The Sooners did kick a field goal late in the half to tie the game at three apiece. In the second half, the NU defense played inspired football, holding Oklahoma to just 47 yards of offense. The Huskers went in front on their first possession of the second half. Abdul Mohammed, who had five catches for 98 yards in the game, showed his toughness on this 24-yard grab. That led to a 26-yard field goal by Tom Seeler to put Nebraska in front 6-3. When the game entered the fourth quarter, the Huskers knew it was time to take control. The biggest play on a 90-yard drive was this 44-yard pass from Brooke Beringer to Abdul Mohammed. He goes long down the left side. He's got Abdul Muhammad complete inside the 35, 30, 25, 20. Abdul Muhammad down he goes. First down, Nebraska inside the 15 yard line. Moments later, Herringer's 11 yard pass to tight end Mark Gilman almost produced a touchdown. On the next play, the Husker offensive line blew the Sooners back and Behringer scored easily. 
Nebraska dominated the rest of the way. In fact, Oklahoma had a minus five yards of total offense in the fourth quarter, compared to 132 yards for the Huskers. The 13-3 win gave the number one ranked Huskers a fourth straight Big A title and an automatic trip to the Orange Bowl, where NU will play for the national championship. Okay, really, really proud of you. Uh, not very many teams, as I said earlier, that they go undefeated two years in a row. And uh, great effort, uh, great testimony to your guys' dedication, determination. I don't, you know, we got a good football team athletically, but the thing that we've had uh, probably better than anything else is we played together. Uh, each segment of the team has put, uh, picked the other segment up if something wasn't going real well. Your attitude's been good, your work ethic's been good. That'll carry you a long ways, uh, whether it's football or whatever you're doing. So remember that. And I think you've uh, dedicated yourself to getting the thing done, getting the whole thing. So let's make sure that we do whatever it takes <coughs> next month to get the thing done. Because uh, very few teams are in, the, in this position, have this opportunity. Uh, lots of programs go 20, 30 years and never get to this point. So let's finish it off. You know, whatever they give us, we'll take it. Let's make it work, okay? Congratulations. You did a great job. Yeah! 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 Unfinished business. That was and continues to be the motto for the 1994 Nebraska football team. Because with the national championship riding on the Orange Bowl, this team is still on a mission. Well, being that we were so close last year, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people felt like we should have won. And, uh, you know, coming back and uh, working in the off season, you know, we felt like we had unfinished business. You know, try not to let it get that close this time. You know, try to try to go out with a statement. I think we've, we won the four in a row, and now we do have this one bowl game, and we do have this national championship waiting for us. And last year, it was pretty close, and I think we should have had it. But this year, we're going to do it. So the unfinished business is going to happen this year. The unfinished business thing is, uh, you know, we truly believe ever since the summer that, you know, we'd be in this situation, and we just we just uh, tackled a huge hurdle today, but you know, I think what we set out to do is not over yet, and I think everybody realizes that, and I think, uh, you know, we're going to prepare hard the next month, and I expect us to play well to come January first. Yeah, they'll they'll do whatever it takes to to be successful. Uh, they're going to be dealt. Uh, probably a pretty difficult hand again in the bowl game. Uh, we've had that steadily. and uh, But uh, if any group can overcome that, uh, these guys can do it. All Nebraskans can be proud of the 1994 Husker team, the only team in the country to finish with a perfect 12-0 record. They deserve to be ranked number one. As hard as it may seem, they not only kept up the rich tradition of Husker football, but they added to it. Senior tight end Matt Shaw summed it up best. Yeah, I think that's something that uh, every player here takes great pride in, you know. I mean, once you step your foot in the door, you're part of that, and it's your responsibility to maintain that integrity and uh, do the best you can to, to keep the program where it's at. And I think the, the seniors and the, the upperclassmen should be real proud of what they've done for that. You know, we've, uh, it's always been there, but I think we've maybe polished it up over the last couple of years. Following the Oklahoma win, there was understandably a lot of emotion in the Nebraska locker room. Feelings of excitement and joy, of satisfaction and accomplishment, of pride and unity. This team has practiced like champions, they've played like champions, and most importantly, they've conducted themselves as champions. And that truly is the best word to describe the 1994 Nebraska football team. Champions.
To receive a 1995 Orange Bowl video or additional copies of this tape, call 1-800-230-3831 or stop by your nearby Walgreens store. This has been a Husker Vision production.